So these are the helical gears that are just used in the torsion differential. And you might think they'd be quite difficult and I'd have to get them from somewhere else. But in fact, I drew those in Tinkercad and it is really quite easy. Now it's a sad truth that in the world there is no perfection. There is only compromise and approximation. It's the way life is. When it comes to doing something on 3D printing, the best resolution you can get is about 0.1, but normally 0.2. And the reason it's 0.2 millimetres is that's the size of the nozzle. So we can get layers at 0.2 of a millimetre. And when I look at this, it's 30 millimetres tall or 3 centimetres tall. In there, every millimetre is going to be five layers. A layer at 0.2 times 5 equals 1 millimetre. This being 30 millimetres tall and five layers each, this is actually 150 layers tall. This one is 15 millimetres, so of course that is 75 layers tall. At 75 layers tall, Tinkercad can cope with that. So all I need to do is a layer and rotate it, another layer and rotate it, and what I'll get is this approximation of a helix that I wouldn't be able to print any better even if it was perfect. So that approximation is just fine. Of course, the question is, how far do I have to turn it? Well, on this one, the tall one, each of those spirals goes around a full 180 degrees. We know that the layers are 150. We want to go 180. So if the first layer starts at zero, the net end layer ends at 180 degrees round. So each layer has to turn 1.2 degrees. Relatively the same is true for this, but on this occasion all I wanted to do was go 60 degree round. So for that, the bottom layer is at zero, the top layer is at 60, and the other 75 layers need to turn at 0.8 of a degree each to create these helixes. Now let me actually show you how I did that in Tinkercad. Okay, let's start with a small one. First of all, go to the search bar, type in gear, it will pull up the gear for you, there's the one we want, and pull it onto the worktop. I actually hate that colour because you can't see what you're doing, so change its colour. You'll see if we click on gear again that it's modulus 1. We want modulus 1.5 because that's the size that I want to use for my gears. It's got 18 teeth, but in this case I just want 10 teeth. And it'll readjust that gear for me. Now the gear height is 20 millimetres. You see it's at 20 millimetres, it says there. So let's change that to 0 0.2. And we've got the gear size that we actually want. If we zoom in on that a little bit. And what we want to do is copy and repeat that and rotate it. So hit the copy key. Here you'll see its distance from the base, so change that to the point 2. And here's the angle, and change that to 1.2. And that will copy and rotate it. You can see the slight rotation there. Then we just go up to the duplicate key, which is right here, and keep on going with that, duplicating it. And as we duplicate it, you can see on the screen here, it's now at 3.2, and we just keep going on with that duplicating key until we reach 30. There we go. And that is our first helical gear. If we now highlight that whole thing and group it, we'll get the single gear. And we can export that now as an SDL. Now we want to do exactly the same thing for the larger gear. So pick gear from the pull down list. You'll notice it's modulus 1.5 like the other gear, but this time it's larger, so it's got 20 teeth in it, but it's the same routine. Set the height to 0.2 because that's our layer height. When we repeat that, so we hit the copy, then we change the distance from the base by 0 0.2 because that's our layer height, so we're moving it up one layer, and the angle of rotation we change to 0.8. Actually, in this case, it's 0 point minus 0 0.8 because of the direction of rotation of that arrow that we've just seen. When we've done that, it will rotate it in the same direction as the previous gear. Had we done point 0.8, it would have rotated it around anti-clockwise, because you can see the arrow there. We want to rotate it clockwise to get a clockwise spiral, and again, we just repeat that 
and it rotates all the way around until that reads 15, which is 15 millimeters. There we go. Then group it, export it, and we have our second helical gear. Now, Tinkercad does sulk if you get more than 300 objects. So what you need to do once you've grouped it is export it as an STL, re-import it, and then delete the stack of 300 or 150. And now Tinkercad will think it's only one object. So everything will be copyable, movable, and very much quicker because instead of being 300 objects in a stack, it's a single object. So, turns out it's relatively easy to do things like helical gears and stick them in something like a torsion differential. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was of use to you. Thank you very much for watching.